Welcome, and in this session, we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter 27. It's going to be a very interesting chapter. This is the chapter when Jesus is crucified. He's tried, he's crucified, and it's also uh, going to be talking about Judas here. Let's get right into it. Uh, Verse 1. Now when morning had come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, when he saw that Jesus was condemned, felt remorse, and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I betrayed innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? You see to it. In other words, "Eh, that's that's your fault. That's that's you know the that's something for you to worry about. Verse 5, he threw, down the, he threw down the pieces of silver in the sanctuary and departed. Then, they went away, then he went away and hanged himself. Verse 6, the chief priests took the pieces of silver and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since it is the price of blood. They took counsel and bought the potter's field with them to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day, or Akaldama. Verse 9. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the prophet, was fulfilled, saying, They took thirty pieces of silver, the price of him, the price of him of uh, whom, they, uh, whom a price had been set, whom some of the children of Israel priced, And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded there. Commanded me, excuse me. That is found in Zechariah, or Zechariah, chapter 11, verses 12 and 13, and Jeremiah, chapter 19, verses 1 to 13, and chapter 32, verses uh, 6 to 9. Verse 11, Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, So you say. Verse 12, And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Don't you hear how many things they testify against you? He gave him no answer, not even one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. He was amazed. Now the feast, now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the multitude one prisoner whom they desired. They had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. This would actually mean son of the father, Bar meaning son, and Abba. Uh, his father, okay? And the Greek always puts the S on the end, of course, uh, many times. Verse 17. When therefore they were gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Yeshua, who is called Hamashiach, the Christ? For he knew that Because of envy, they had delivered him up. Envy. Verse 19, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. It's interesting how God speaks so many times in dreams. Verse 20, now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes to ask for Barabbas and destroy Yeshua. But the governor answered them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said Barabbas. I suppose in the original Hebrew it would be Barabbas. Verse 22, Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Yeshua, who is called Mashiach? They said, let him be crucified. But the governor said, why? What evil has he done? 
But they cried out exceedingly, saying, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that nothing was being gained, but rather that a disturbance was starting, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous person. You see to it. In other words, you're responsible for it. Verse 25, all the people answered, may his blood be on us and on our children. Verse 26, then he released Baraba to them, but Yeshua he flogged and delivered to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Yeshua into the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison together against him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They braided a crown of thorns and put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. I mean, this is very much mocking, you know, like usually a, a king would have some kind of a scepter, even a golden scepter. Here he has just a reed mocking his authority, mocking his strength, mocking his, his position in, 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 in all of the universe. And they kneeled down before him and, and mocked him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him. They took a, the reed and struck him on the head. When they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put his put his clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to go with them that he might carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of a skull, they gave him sour wine to drink mixed with gall. Vinegar, it is, mixed with gall. And in the uh, notes here, it says, Gall is a bitter-tasting dark green oil from a wormwood plant that is alcoholic in its effect. It's not alcohol, but in its effect, it's similar. When he, when he had tasted it, he would not drink. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them, casting lots. And in the Textus Receptus, that is the same manuscript that the King James uh, uses, it adds that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And they sat and watched him there. So, you should realize here that it's not like how you see it today in the cru- in the crucifixes. Okay, it's not. It, it, Jesus was not uh, partially naked. He was fully naked, and he was beaten and whipped like like it says in Isaiah fifty three, beyond recognition. Okay, it was beyond recognition, almost to death. Verse thirty seven, they set over his head the accusation against him, written, This is Yeshua, the King of the Jews. Then there were two robbers crucified with him, one on his right hand and one on his left. Those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, and saying, You who, dis- you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Interesting to note that this is Satan's will for the fruit to come down off the cross. The first fruit. Jesus is is called the first fruits in other parts of Scripture. Jesus being the fruit, the cross, speaking of being the tree, as other parts of Scripture talks about the cross as being the tree. Satan wants the fruit off the tree. This is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. Okay, it said that Satan, the devil, tempted Eve to take the fruit, take the fruit down off the tree. You don't want it to be crucified. You don't want it to be hanging on the tree. You want it to take take down off the tree. In the same way, also that 
Eve said that she saw that the food that the fruit was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable to make one wise. Is the three categories of sin: good for food, which is the f- flesh, um, lust of the flesh; pleasant to the eyes, which is the lust of the eyes, and desirable to make one wise, according to worldly wisdom, and that is pride. Three categories, as John says in his in his uh, in his epistle. There's the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, which is from the world, not from the Father. The three categories of sin. See, a lot of times people don't have, there are some people who don't have, they don't suffer from any kind of lust of flesh or lust of the eyes, but they have pride. And this is sin just as much as any other sin. This is what Job uh, suffered from, okay? This is what the, you know, the foolish virgins suffered from. That's why they didn't. If they didn't want to wait, they didn't think about waiting, they didn't want to think they didn't want to be humble and wait. They want everything now, everything is instant. They didn't think that the bridegroom was coming fast. But here, Yeshua on the cross reversed that the fruit on the tree, reversed what happened in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Let me explain. Yeshua wasn't good for food, so to speak, in a sense of he did not appeal to the lust of the flesh. He was a total mess. He was a, you know, a piece of, a piece, like a piece of tenderized meat hanging there. He didn't appeal to the, to be pleasant to the eyes. It says that he was despised. He was rejected. He was not very beautiful on the cross at all. And it says in Acts chapter 17, it's because of the ignorance, or I believe it's, excuse me, Acts chapter 3, verse 17. It's because of the ignorance of these people that they crucified him. Ignorance. So Eve sought knowledge, and by knowledge, by the, the wrong kind of knowledge, that is, of course, you know, not the knowledge of God, but rather the worldly, fleshly, worldly knowledge, so to speak, by that knowledge, the fruit come down of, off the tree. By the opposite, turn it around, the ignorance, the fruit was back up on the tree. You see? Complete inversion of the fall. So, but the, the saint now is, hates the cross and always hates crucifixion, always hates sacrifice. So that's why he said, if you're the son of God, I mean... It doesn't say here specifically that it was the devil himself saying it, but we know that these people were not very godly. They were children of the devil. If you're the son of God, come down from the cross. That's the devil's will. Verse 41, Likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes, the Pharisees and the elders. Okay? The the Textus Receptus, it says here, omits Pharisees. Um, so that the word Pharisees is not found in the King James Version, but uh, yeah. All these people, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, you know, the Pharisees, were also mocking. Verse 42, they said, he saved others, but he can't save himself. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now. And then we will believe in him. See, what a twisted, twisted, perverted statement. Because it is God's will for him to be on the cross. It says in Isaiah chapter 53, I believe it's 52 as well, going into 53. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased yod heh It pleased the Father to bruise the Son in in that sense, okay? It pleased the Father to to bruise, to crush Jesus. That was his will. That was his glorious will. Verse 43, He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Again, 
they're very ignorant here. They're very ignorant. They don't know that it is God's will for him to go through the crucifixion to die, and then God will deliver him from death. Sometimes God, you want God to deliver you before, a little bit too early. You know, God wants you to go through some things. Verse 44, the robbers also who were crucified with him cast on him the same reproach. Now from the sixth hour, and it says here uh, about noon, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. Darkness. Okay. Again, this is a Passover. And this is very reminiscent of the, the plague of darkness in the first Passover uh, in, the, in the days of Moses. Okay. It, all refle it all reflects Jesus. Everything reflects Yeshua. Everything. Yeshua is the, per the personified Word of God. Je Yeshua is the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Ketavim in human form. Verse 46, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemme sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that's a direct quote out of Psalm 22, verse 1. Again, you want to, you want to know the words in red? Again, Jesus is the, the word personified. You want to know what Jesus is like? You know, you want to know more of the words in red, that more, the, more than what we get in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John? Read the Psalms. Read the Psalms. Jesus, it's a, how many times did Jesus speak the Psalms? Quote, just like this. It is him speaking. Yeshua. Read the Psalms. Go through the Psalms and think of it as, as Jesus himself speaking. It will just rock you, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, verse 47. Some of them stood there. When they heard it, said, this man is calling Elijah. They thought that Yeshua was calling Eliyahu, but he was calling Eli. Eli meaning my God. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave, it, gave him a drink. The rest said, let him be. Let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Yeshua cried with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He died. Behold, the veil of the temple was torn into from top, from the top to the bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered into the holy city and appeared to many. By the way, in the Apocrypha and in other, the other documents, uh, ancient historical documents, it tells you exactly who these people were. Very, very, very amazing. We'll get to that in another time. Verse 54, Now the centurion and those who were with him watching Jesus, when they saw the earthquake. Now, this is a centurion. Realize, this is a, this is a man who is in authority over a hundred soldiers. Okay? This is a very powerful, this is a powerful man, a centurion. When he saw the earthquake and the things that were done, they were terrified, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Many, many women were there watching from afar who had followed Yeshua from Galilee, serving him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James or Yaakov and Joseph, and Mary and the and excuse me, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, the mother of James and uh, John, as in Peter, James, and John. Verse fifty-seven. When evening had come, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself was also Yeshua's disciple, came. This man went into Pilate and asked for Yeshua's body. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given up. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean 
linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which had been cut out of out in the in the rock. Then he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene was there and the other Mary, sitting opposite the tomb. Now, on the next day, which was the day after the preparation day, this would be Saturday or Shabbat, Sabbath, the chief priests and the Pharisees were gathered together to Pilate and saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said that while he was still, when he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, <laughs> I mean, you think about it now, these guys, they were not, I mean, they were very much unbelievers, but if they were real, real unbelievers, they would say, ah, he said he would rise. That's all nonsense. But they're like thinking, oh, maybe he might. Maybe he might. Or something like that. Or there's going to be some kind of a, a trick here. Command, therefore, that the, that the tomb may be secure until the, third door, until the third day, lest perhaps his disciples come at night and steal him away and tell the people he is risen from the dead. And the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard. Go, make it as secure as you can. Okay, this is a command from the governor. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone. So it wasn't just, just a big, huge, heavy stone. It was sealed as well. I'm sure they sealed it with a good seal and watched, <laughs> uh, keeping a good watch because this is a command of the governor. So this concludes the reading of Matthew chapter 27. I hope it was a blessing to you. And join me as I read Matthew chapter 28 next session. Thanks again for watching. God bless.